You're right, folks, and welcome back. So, the beta. Yes, the beta, the beta, the beta. I've not exactly hidden the fact I'm unimpressed with Blizzard's efforts as of late. The classic Kata beta is arguably one of the most tragic excuses for a testing environment I've seen for a long time. And I want to touch on it a bit more in depth than I suppose thought out. Hopefully, this will iron out and make clear why I am so underwhelmed and disappointed in the state of the beta at the moment. Now, before we crack on, there's something to address. It's evident that if you are even remotely negative or critical of an aspect of the beta or the game at the moment, you're met with all those people who think you're just being melodramatic or angry on the internet for the sake of it. Put simply, that isn't the case. I hold Blizzard and this game to a much higher standard than evidently they and a lot of others do. I've been playing this game since time immemorial, and whilst I don't expect everything they release to be pure gold, a record-breaking banger after banger after banger, I do expect something playable, enjoyable, and that has been tested properly. Just because Blizzard are content to release half-baked crap on an increasingly expedited schedule does not mean I am going to bend over backwards and lick the rancid dingleberries from their fetid assholes. So, let's get on with it and start with the bugs. Now, bugs on the beta, par for the freaking course. It is the inherent core purpose of something like a beta or an alpha. Finding bugs and just making sure everything is working as intended, and you're supposed to, you know, report those bugs and any other broken malarkey you come across with the expectation that those issues will be remedied so that you can continue about your business, making sure the rest of the game is working correctly. Thing is, at the minute, that's not really happening. There are bugs in the beta that have been present since day one and are still in the beta as of now and they affect all manner of things. And the problem is they just aren't being dealt with and this does pose a lot of issues and concerns because they have now announced the release date of the pre-patch and the expansion's launch itself. Now, if these dates were a bit further away, these bug issues wouldn't necessarily be that much of an issue. But to highlight something I said in one of my recent videos, the beta has been out about 5 or 6 weeks and very little actual development seems to have taken place, at least as far as the beta testers can see. And we're just shy of 3 weeks from pre-patch launch as of recording, and they've still got a hell of a lot of work to do to make this game even remotely playable on launch. Essentially, they've got twice as much stuff to sort in half the time they've already had, which doesn't really bode well. And of course, they've got their own version that they're working on at the back end, but that does little to assuage any concerns with just how broken things are at the minute. If it launches even a fraction as bugged and scuffed as it is now, we're screwed. Plain and simple. We need to be able to see the changes and fixes they're making on their end, but we aren't. And if what we have is their attempt at a functional build, oh Christ, that's even more terrifying. Then we've got the changes themselves, or some of them at least, that don't make a lot of sense. The biggest offender at the minute just so happens to be guilds. In Kata, if you were unaware, guilds get a little bit of an update. This is when guild leveling became a thing and you got perks of being in one. Higher the level, the greater the number and oomph they would provide. When the beta hit, these perks were already in the game and were all available immediately upon creating and joining a guild. The leveling was not, but we expected that to come in a later build when they updated the UI and other such things. Well, they updated the UI, but levels are still absent, and even more peculiar, most of the perks that were in Cataclysm appear to have been ripped out. Now, you might argue, well, they've probably just been temporarily removed because they weren't working. This is a more than fair assessment at face value, but what is odd is that healing classes have noticed a mass res ability in their spellbook, but not the guild mass res, which was available to all and sundry, the class specific ones that came later on in the game's life, because the guild mass res is one of those perks that appears to have been scrapped. Now, a lot of the murmurings on this particular alteration is that Blizzard are just trying to make the whole guild leveling perk system easier and faster to deal with for smaller or 10-man only guilds, because guild leveling is done via completing activities in guild groups, so bigger guilds doing more activities together naturally would level faster. 
I appreciate this in the context of Cataclasic's expedited content cadence. If everything else is going faster, then yes, this system would require some adjustments. I can appreciate that. It still doesn't explain the gutting of the perks. They could have just scrapped the levels and tied the perks to reputation or something to that effect. This could change, but I've been saying that the entire beta and bugger all actually has. Then there's just a whole mess of smaller things that again don't make a lot of sense as of yet. Transmog is one. Currently you don't have the ability to save custom mogs or even view class sets. Now legendaries, trash items and being able to hide near enough every item on your character is fair enough. It was a bit of a long shot expecting all that so I wasn't necessarily disappointed by their absence. But the other two features are just basic transmog. Why can't we save our custom sets? Why are we unable to view class sets? Like, that's as simple as transmog needs to be. Again, it could change. Hope it does. Not really sure it will. The shoulder enchant from Therizane is another thing that doesn't quite add up at the minute and was in fact something I assumed that would see a change. A while ago, I speculated they might become account wide, similar to the Sons of Hodir ones in Wrath, and the BOA head enchants that persist in Kata. Right now, they are still bind on pickup, meaning they're character bound. Meaning you will need to farm that reputation on every character you level and intend to do endgame content on. Now, you may not see that as a bad thing necessarily, but look at Wrath. The quality of life of the player base was vastly improved, having those required enchants be accessible account-wide from the get-go. It also makes having the BOA head enchants in Kata make more sense. It's a bit contradictory if only one enchant is account-wide, whereas the other requires you to farm the rep every time. Like, when I think of, you know, hashtag some changes, this is the sort of thing I'm thinking of. Improving player quality of life without diminishing the Cataclysm experience, which, you know, the aforementioned messing around with the guild perks does to a degree. And there are just more minor things that aren't doing what they should. Flying being a weird one at the moment. I mentioned it in a beta log. The TLDR being in original Kata, if you went into that expansion with a mount capable of reaching 3 10% flying speed, you were given the new Master Riding Passive free of charge because you'd already been using it. It made sense. It's just a nice little quality of life addition in the beta. This hasn't happened. It could be a small thing they just haven't remedied yet. Of course it could. But it could be intentional. We don't know. And that's the biggest issue. Communication, or lack thereof. It's bloody awful. And this is honestly the crux of the problem. Because the flying thing should be a non-issue. Having that as it was in original Kata doesn't impact their content cadence or class balance or anything nearly so important. It is a small thing, but they've gotten it so monumentally wrong and they haven't addressed it yet. So how can we expect them to get the important stuff right if they can't even successfully repeat something as inconsequential as that? Frankly, they've barely said a word since the beta went live, and when they have, the posts they've made are mostly empty. Their known issues lists are tiny and don't even touch the outer shell of the mound of actual issues. Again, you could argue, well, maybe they don't know about them. Trust me, they're so glaringly obvious and are discussed so frequently on the beta. If they don't know about them, you really have to question what the hell they're doing. And when they do deem us worthy of a post, it's usually riddled with errors, incorrect information, and statements so vague you've got tits like me on the internet sat here speculating what it could mean. Because instead of giving us a firm, concrete answer to Summit, we get a single sentence that then has to be revised time and again, because Blizzard have confused everyone to such a degree that not even they know what they were trying to say. It's as if no one fact-checks the stuff they put out. It also doesn't help that this past week, the beta has been offline more than it's been online. In fact, at the start of the week, it went down for like 26 hours, I believe. In that time, people were hopeful that we would see many fixes across the board, as well as fine-tuning and just polishing stuff up. During that first down period is actually when we received the announcement of the pre-patch. The beta comes back up late the next day, and not a single sodding thing had actually changed, and as of recording this, the beta is down again. 
When it comes back up, we could be looking at a completely different game, polished to near completion. But I doubt it, and Blizzard, again, haven't actually said a single sodding word. Basically, if they were communicating with the player base more frequently and were able to justify the changes they have or haven't made, that'd be bloody fantastic, and we wouldn't necessarily be in this precarious position. And I'm not saying you'd then have to agree with those changes, but if they were able to say, look, we've made a change to this feature for XYZ reasons, we believe it will have a positive impact on XYZ aspects of the game, awesome. Again, you wouldn't have to agree with those changes, but they would have at least given us an insight as to why they took action against a certain aspect of the expansion, and it could even give the player base a chance to properly respond and go, yeah, no, that's a really bad idea. Thing is, Classic is a unique beast. It's going back to expansions and content that has been done before, so we the players know what should be coming our way 99.9% .9 of the time. But when things start changing and deviating from the known path, and we aren't being told anything about that, people are naturally going to start to worry. Blizzard could pull this back and we could be in for a cracking... Yeah, I guess, I don't know, this expansion is going to piss off at lightning speed. But if they aren't able to explain small things like Transmog not having the ability to save custom sets, I really don't see how they're going to be able to justify assassinating big things like the guild system this expansion. Quick thing before you go, as I was bloody rendering the video, the beta came back up. There have been some improvements, I'll give them that. It's mostly UI stuff, and from what I can see with the classes I've been testing, a fair amount of those issues have been sorted as well. Frost seems functional now, which, about time. But a lot of other stuff still hasn't been touched yet. Let's see what happens in the coming weeks, but who knows, this could actually be pulled off. Anyway, let me know your own thoughts down below. If you're so kind as to like, sub, share with your pals and so on, that'd be grand. Have a good one, folks. Bye for now.